With Halo 2 fixed, it's time to look to the future and of Halo 3 flighting, we finally have a timetable when we can expect it and what Halo 3 needs to have on PC to succeed. Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news information video when it comes to Halo. If you like these news informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button so it lets me know you want to see some more content like this and it greatly helped out the video and channel a lot. So let's get right into the content here. So as we get every Friday, a development update for the MCC. Now I pretty much expected this to be just kind of like, hey, Halo 2 is fixed and Halo 3 is fixed, jump in and have some fun, which they certainly did state that in this uh, update here from Postums, but they give us a little bit of a glimpse what's going to happen in the future. And that future being the flight of Halo 3, which I'm sure what everyone's been really excited about when hearing about MCC coming to PC. But this is what Postums went online to say. Halo 3 is up next on the menu for coming to the MCC on PC. And we are already underway with early stages of flighting in Ring 1. Next week, we aim to get the completely pared down flight build into our partner's hands, which is much sooner than usual. Our goal is to have the Halo 3 public flight kick off in the first half of June. We can't wait to get the community involved. So yeah, when I hear this, I'm like, oh, hex, yeah, we're going to get ourselves some Halo 3 on PC. I am super excited about it. Halo 3 is my favorite Halo in the franchise, so I can't wait to get a chance to play it on PC. Though, there was one little phrase that kind of sent me a little bit of a worry. The phrase of much earlier than we expected as we do know that the current mantra of MCC on PC was it's not ready until it's ready though it hasn't really been followed exactly with CE and especially with Halo 2 with the current events that we are, have happened last week. With Halo 3 being the apex if you will of the Halo franchise in many ways not only just the gameplay and game itself wise but also socially and everything else in between you know how excited people got to play some weird modded Russian version of uh, kind of Halo Halo 3 on PC like two years ago with El Dorito. Yeah, like this is a chance to have it actually happen for us. So this is gonna be a absolutely huge moment for Halo to have this game be released on PC, but it needs to release correctly. Obviously it goes without saying that this game can't release as Halo 2 did. So there needs to be some kind of process in the way to where you guys can test out the builds of these games before they're released. I mean, I thought that was kind of the idea behind the flighting process is more of a way to get the community involved with fixing the game rather than have it be more like an early access thing, which is kind of what's been feeling like, like, like the last two games. Now I do understand there is a bit of a crunch to get these games out on a proper time frame where they're going to be relevant at the release as we most likely will have the release of Halo Infinite in November that only leaves a few months for these games to release and we still have to release Halo 3, we still have to release ODST and Halo 4 as well, most likely before November. So yeah, I can understand trying to get these games out in a relevant time. But again, especially with Halo 3, especially with Halo 3, you absolutely have to nail the launch because not only is it going to be important for just the Halo community to be able to enjoy this game at its proper experience, but also there's going to be a lot of major I would say Twitch celebrities to come in to play the game. You know, a lot of people have very fond members of Halo 3 and there's gonna be a lot of people playing Halo 3. There's gonna be a lot of people streaming it. And when you have thousands and thousands of people seeing your game being a buggy mess like Halo 2's was, yeah, that was a bit of a hit because if you guys don't know, the night that Halo 2 released on PC, we peaked around 45,000 concurrent viewers on Twitch, which means that we were like top 10 on Twitch for Halo in a game that was released in 2004 and 2014 as well. Halo Reach even topped the charts on Twitch and that wasn't even the most liked game in the series. So you can imagine Halo 3 is going to have like the biggest release. There's going to be hundreds of thousands of people probably watching Halo 3 on PC. You got to make sure you get this one right. There are six features I think that absolutely need to be nailed down for Halo 3 to be released on PC to have it be a good PC, true PC experience. 
first one obviously being Forge. Forge was introduced in Halo 3 and it was a massive hit. It's part of the core pillars of the experience of Halo 3. Now, I do believe we will have Forge when it comes to the release as they were originally planning to have the Forge update, which is Theater and Forge released for Halo 2 Anniversary, though it needed a little more time in the oven in for uh, Forge mode there, but Theater got released. And Theater's been working pretty well. It's only capped at 60 frames, but honestly, like that doesn't bother me at all. For gameplay, obviously, it would affect me being locked at 60. So 343 absolutely needs to make sure that the mouse and keyboard inputs and the controller inputs feel as they did back in 2007 when Forge originally released for Halo 3. It's going to be a major component of the game. It's going to be a core pillar of the experience, and it absolutely needs to be nailed down. Number two on this list I think it needs to be taken care of is the unlimited frames working properly. Uh, it seems to work pretty well with Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 2, but those games are basically the PC versions of the old versions that we were playing, so the frame rate works really well on those. Though on the uh, console-only games like uh, Halo Reach and Halo, Halo 2 Anniversary, uh, those on unlimited frames feel very choppy and not the best experience. Pretty much I've been playing with just locked 60 frames, which I wish I was able to play more because my system can definitely play these games at a much higher frame rate. Uh, like I said, on co original Combat Evolved, original Halo 2 plays buttery smooth. Anything about 60 FPS for the more console related games, uh, that's where I notice a lot of framiness. So I really hope that gets taken care of. Number three on this list is an issue that was brought up by Tommy Costa, at least I saw on there. We're talking about the essentially the bullet magnetism doesn't work the same on the MCC as it does for the original Halo games. Essentially, uh, if your reticle was trailing behind a player, those bullets would still register. Obviously, not like all three shots, because you have the leisure shots in Halo 3, but uh, it's a little bit more forgiving on the 360 version than it is on MCC. And so I would like to see that parody of the hit detection keywords there from Halo 2, which I think is still kind of plugging the game right there to be uh, addressed in the update for Halo 3. Number four has been implemented into MCC, but I'm sure a lot of guys don't realize it, but it is the challenge system, which is currently in MCC right now at the moment, where you play any mission on Legendary, you unlock five different versions of the same challenge, uh, but there is no UI in it for it. You get a notification when you complete it, but it's hidden somewhere within the game. Now, this definitely does need its own UI, for it to be you know something people can actually go into the game recognize what they need to do and not have to go to like halo waypoint or the support site to understand where to find your challenges now it was stated in the april development update that the uh, challenge system ui is being worked on and it most likely will be implemented even possibly before halo 3's release i think they might wait for to bring it with it just uh, save time on trying to release so many patches at the same time kind of thing uh, another thing that they mentioned that's in development right now, which I would like to see implemented, is text chat improvements. Now, it's great to have text chat. I'm glad it's in there. I'm glad that the filtering on it isn't as extreme as it was with the flights in Reach. Though, I would like to see some filtering being done at all with it just because you know people online are not the most courteous people so i'd like to see obviously the keywords that we all know should not be said amongst the people to be uh muted out there but also maybe just some ways where you can possibly like move the ch chat box either like some spot on the screen you prefer or minimize the size a little bit or just turn it off completely that as well would be actually be really nice because so many times i'm like hitting like a nice clip or something like that and i want to share it like on the line or something like that, or put it in a video that have like a big text box showing up while taking, you know, hitting a clip, it doesn't look as nice. And so I wish I would really would have that feature implemented into there. And lastly on this list guys is the weapon view model adjustments. If you don't know what I mean, take a look at these screenshots we mentioned in the April update, where you can show like in Halo Reach with a really wide FOV and you're playing on centered crosshairs that yeah, the weapon takes up a lot of your screen, but with view model adjustments, you can lower that and move it to left or right however you please to have it fit your screen much better. So you can play the game how you like without having any inconveniences of having half your screen taken out by your weapon, which is something I think also needs to be definitely taken care of because you know that a lot of these uh, viewing angles of weapons were really only taken consideration back in 2007 when the FOV was like, what, 78 or something like that, where I'll be playing like a 100, 120 FOV, the weapon model is gonna be looking kind of funky. So that definitely needs to be taken care of as well well so halo 3 flighting happening in june it's getting around there pretty close to us guys i would assume that yeah, probably the first half 
of June, unless no big issues get found. We'd be playing some Halo 3 on PC, which would be certainly exciting to play. If you guys want to see some Halo 3 gameplay for that flight, I'm sure I'll be invited as I've been invited to every other flight before then. You know, make sure you tap subscribe to the channel, guys, to keep yourselves updated with all the content happening in Halo and on this channel as well. If you like this informational video, please make sure to tap that like button. It really helps me out. Leave a comment down below with the most thing that you think 343 absolutely needs to nail down for the launch of Halo 3. And if you're new to the channel or missing any content from me, check out the videos on the screen right over here. Got a link to all my news and information uh, videos on a playlist if you've been out of the loop for the last few days or so. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you on the next video. Peace out.